You're listening to the Third Coast Gridiron H Towns podcast on the LSG Network with your host, Mark Henry. The Texas high school football season is rolling like an 18 wheeler, and it's rolling just as hard in H Town. And man, it's we're in week three of the high school football season. I am your host, Mark Henry of the Third Coast Gridiron. Right here on the LSG Network and the Lone Star Podcast Network. We appreciate you joining and listening to us on a weekly basis as we talk about H-Town High School football. Listen, we'll talk a little bit about week two and some of the games and matchups that we talked about on last week. We'll also spotlight our third coach, Gridiron players of the week and then we'll roll into week three talk about a couple of the matchups that we see around the ace that are key and we'll also talk with the victorious washington eagles and coach holloway and a couple of their standouts from their big victory as the third coast was in the house at Del Mar Stadium when they took on the Austin Mustangs. Man, we appreciate you listening to us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk to Coach Holloway and the Washington Eagles as they took on Austin. And they handed out a shutout 40-0 to over at Del Mar Stadium on Thursday. Here we go. Let's get it, man. We appreciate you listening to the Third Coast. We'll be right back. With open enrollment coming soon for Medicare, ACA, Obamacare, and small group plans for businesses with less than 100 employees, if you're in need of health insurance solutions, look no further than HAP Insurance Agency. Yes, HAP Insurance Agency is a fantastic resource right in the heart of College Station, Texas. Whether you're in retirement, a business owner, or simply looking for the best health coverage option, HAP Insurance Agency has got you covered. You can find them in College Station at 1551 Greens Prairie Road West, Suite 101A, or give Holly Pritchard a call at 972-897-0814. That's HAP Insurance Agency. Do you have a party coming up or just want a special gift? Check out Nani's Sweeter Side. Yes, Nani's Sweeter Side makes the most amazing custom created sugar cookies with your design. They also offer paint your own cookies and decorate your own cookies. Those make an excellent sweet activity that you can sink your teeth into at parties. Nani's also offers some of the most amazing cupcakes ever. You can check out Nani Sweeter Side at NaniSweeterSide.com. That's N-A-N-I. Check her out on Facebook. Just look for Nani's Sweeter Side. Or give her a call at 937-499-4790. At Nani Sweeter Side, you'll find that happiness is homemade. The Third Coast was in the house Thursday night, Del Mar Stadium, Washington taking on Austin. Both teams coming off week one losses where the Eagles lost a close one to Wharton and Austin Mustangs. They were blanked by Wheatley 58 to zero. Now, the Washington Eagles were coming off a solid 2022 season where they went undefeated for the first time since the 1990s and were district champs. There's been a coaching change. Coach Holloway takes over for Coach Chatham, who moved on to Ben Davis and Aldine. And listen. The Washington Eagles took care of business. They blanked Austin 40-0 in a great game on Thursday night. Uh, We talked to Coach Holloway about what he's doing with these guys here in the 2023 season. Defensively, they were led by Avery Ina, a senior. Listen, he was an outside linebacker last year, moved over to the safety position. He's a great tackler in open field, a guy that's got some length. That'll be a steal for a collegiate program at the next level. And we talked to newcomer, junior running back, Mason Bean, who had two touchdowns on the night, well over 100 yards, including a 45-yard scamper where he showed great bursts. You know, he's a powerful runner uh, in between the tackles, a guy that you'll need to know about in the Washington attack going forward. We talked to Coach Holloway and those two players from the Eagles right after the game. Take a listen. Booker T. Washington on top, 40 to zero. First win for Coach Holloway and his regime. Talk about first. Let's go back to next week, last week. Eight to six, you go up, you come back, 
you lose right at the end. Talk about what the message was this week to tell these guys to keep going forward. Well, the, the message is we, we zero and zero every time we hit the field. So last week, we tried to let them forget about that and just move forward to the next game, have short-term memory. Now, it looks like you got a stable of backs behind that offensive line. You kind of started out slow, but as you kept chugging at it, chugging at it, the offensive line got going, you got your backs going. Talk about your O-line tonight. Hey, O-line played a tremendous job. Hey, we had a new freshman that came in, uh, leading by uh, our senior Larry Connolly. Hey, but the backs, they played a tremendous job. Uh, we had a... Uh, Ahmad Richardson, uh, Rich, uh, Bean, Mason Bean, Robert Hawkins, and uh, De Davion Houston. They played a tremendous job, but I want to give my hats off to our quarterback, Cam Taylor. Uh, he ran the offense well, he delivered the ball real well, and he, he ran the offense like he's supposed to. Now, we saw Taylor in a scrimmage earlier in the preseason. Talk about how he's kind of developed his maturity, and he was very calm at times. Well, our quarterback coach, Coach Keller, and Coach Galloway, our offense coordinator, he's working real well with him. He's got very accurate. Uh, he's getting the ball out, and we're working on time management. So this this game, he was able to manage the, the clock a little bit better and getting the, getting the offense on the road. All right, Washington on top, 40-0. to to get the first win of the season. Defensive leader for the Washington Eagles, Avery Ina, with the big, big victory, 40-0. to Now, Avery, talk about the keys back there, because you were all over this place making tackle after tackle. Uh, I would say the keys were just dominating. Last week we came up short in a close game, eight to twelve against Warden. But uh, the feeling that we had last week, we don't want to experience that again. So this this tonight was uh, to show everybody in the district that we we haven't slacked off. We're still grinding. We're still working. We're gonna make mistakes, but we're gonna show that we can dominate too. Now, as a senior leader, how are you bringing these young guys up? Only six seniors on the team. Very young team up underneath you guys. But it seems like you got it together this week. I would say it's being the example. Uh, we can say something, but then not do it. So our most objective is, is to show the little freshmen that we're leaving behind, is to always, if you tell somebody to do something, you gotta be able to do it too. If you're able to coach somebody, you gotta be able to take the coaching too. If you're able to yell at somebody, you gotta be able to take the yelling back. So that's what we always say. There you have it, Avery Island, look out for him, a senior. Safety for Booker T. Washington, college coaches, you may wanna get him on your radar. Washington on top, 40 to zero tonight. The Washington Eagles on top tonight for their first win, 40-0 over Austin. One of the many running backs that had a great game, Mason Bean, a junior. Uh, talk about that big run that you had in the second half. Okay, so we was running up the middle. I decided to bounce outside. It was uh, wide open outside, so I ran, and my receiver right there, great block on the edge. I just turned it, turned it on and just beat it in. Now talk about that offensive line in front of you, some big holes there in the second half. How did you get it done as a team to get that first victory? Man, practice. Practice and weight room. Coaches have been really hard on this since the last game because we lost. And, you know, it's a young it's a young O-line except for one of them or maybe two, senior and junior. It's, it's very young. So they're getting into it. They're getting in the field. And it's just amazing how we can all put it together. There you have it. Washington on top 40-0. to Get their first win in the season. Thank you. Shout out to the Washington Eagles on their big victory over Austin. Again, man, that team's on the rise. We'll be checking in on them later on as the season progresses on, man. Let's talk a few scores around the H. We'll start with North Shore with a big 53-0 to zero win over spring. It was all North Shore from the get-go, 34-9 at halftime. It's junior sensation, Kayla Bailey threw touchdowns to Dion DeBlanc and Christopher Barnes in the first half and rushed for another touchdown. He finished 10 of 16 for 186 yards and rushed for 32 more yards. Listen, North Shore is North Shore. They're back. They're going to be strong. They're going to make a deep playoff run again and possibly make another state run. They're just that good, man. Uh, DeAndre Hardiman also had 129 yards and a touchdown as well. The defense was fabulous again. They held spring to 92 yards of total offense, man. Summer Creek, another district foe of North Shore. Clear Falls falls to Summer Creek 32-14. to Summer Creek, listen, my guy Vaughn over there, he's been playing phenomenal. Uh, Tulsa commit. Uh, Summer Creek's off to a 2-0 and start. Listen, they're a very good team. C. King, let's talk about them a little bit. We talked about this at the beginning. They go up to Allen and beat a very good Allen team, 45-28. to Vincent Jones 
Nine catches for 236 yards and three touchdowns. Darius Clark James threw for 368 and five tubs, man. Listen, Clark James is putting on a phenomenal show as well. He's a guy that you need to know about in the H from the quarterback positions that that's playing at a phenomenal level so far, and he's one of the reasons that King is 2-0 and on the year. We'll run through some score, more scores really quick. Cypher over Cypress Park, 49-16. Magnolia takes down Tomball, 27-7. Manville gets back into winning ways, 49-12 over Beaumont Westbrook. Listen, a big, big win. They definitely, definitely are a team that you're going to know about here in the H because, listen, they've been doing this for a while. Uh, the Mavericks are always a very good team. Um, you know, Beaumont Westbrook's falling on some hard times. They fall to 0-2. Uh, Manville's had a 3 to nothing victory all t- uh, victories all the time against Westbrook in uh, that series. So they get the dub. They get, on, get that particular win, and they bounce back from a week one loss. Shadow Creek 20-7 to over Clear Springs. New Caney with a big victory over Porter. Now, Porter's a very good team. Uh, a lot of people uh, like Porter uh, coming out of that area. You know, um, they're a team that has a very, very good running game. Uh, but New Caney, you know, they come in as a, as one of those teams coming out. Uh, you know, they have a deep playoff run every single year, man. The Eagles get the victory 31-14. to Barbers Hill, man, they just trounced Montgomery 56-6. to they roll, man. They had a 42-0 to zero lead at halftime and didn't look back, man. Shout out to Barbers Hill for the big victory over Montgomery. Magnolia West, listen, Magnolia West is a very, very good team. They've been uh, really good the last couple of years. They take care of business against Bush, 49-6. to six. Bryson Broadway had six touchdown passes in the game. He is playing Phenomenal. He's a guy that you need to know about over at Magnolia West, one of the top quarterbacks in the area. We'll run through these final scores before we get to our Grind and Shine Players of the Week. 45 to, nothing, 45 to 21, Lamar over the Woodlands. They snapped a four-game winning streak that the Woodlands had over Lamar, man. The Texans led 35-7 to seven at halftime. Jordan Reeves, he's a senior over there. He's been playing phenomenal as well. He's a guy that can play quarterback. He can play receiver. He can play safety. He's a Swiss Army knife type guy. Threw for three touchdowns. Tristan Brown, who's one of the top receivers in the area, nine catches for 108 yards and two scores. Gibson also caught a touchdown pass, and Justin Howard rushed for 196 yards and three scores. Man, definitely a team that you need to look up, look out for. Willis gets a big one over Temple, 45-17. to Dalen Robinson had four touchdowns for Willis as they get – a big, big win over Temple. I've been talking about this since the first episode of this season, man. Willis is setting themselves up for a great run. Uh, they got a lot of weapons over there. Uh, of course, they have one of the best players in the country in DJ Lagway, the Florida commit. Uh, he's got some pieces around him, man. Definitely, definitely going to have to get up and go see those Wildcats play, man. That's a very, very good team, man. Uh, Doby over Grand Oaks 20 to 7, 27 to 10. Caney Creek over Galena Park, 27-7. Oak Ridge over Stafford, 41-34. Jordan, look, Katie Jordan, listen. This is a very good team. They were on the cusp of getting to the playoffs last year. Colin Willits, one of the best quarterbacks in the area that you may not know about. If you maybe hadn't been paying attention to high school football in the H, you may not know. But Colin Willis, Willits is a very good quarterback. Chad Gasper, uh, two touchdowns on the night as well. You got Zachariah Sample. You know, these guys are loaded over there as well. Andrew Marsh, one of the top players in 2025 class at the receiver position. These guys are a team to watch coming out of that Katy district. I think that they can make some noise this year. Um, they just were a new school here. This is their third season. Last year was their first Varsity City season. And they almost punched their ticket to the playoffs. They came up short, uh, I think, in the last week and lost to miss the playoffs. But I think – this year, you hear, you're hearing it right here on the third coast grid. I think that Katie Jordan punches their ticket and they get in the playoffs. They got a lot of weapons and a lot of talent over there. And Colin Willits is one of those guys that you're going to need to know about. He's he's the catalyst that kind of makes that engine go with the weapons around him with Sample and uh, 
and those guys, man. They and and Chad Gasper's a great running back that you're going to know about here. I think he's got two more years to go over there. He's a great back. Can catch, can run, do it all type of back. Need to know about Keddy Jordan, man. The, the Jordan's making some noise over there, man, in that district. Uh, you know, they got Tompkins. You got Katie, who got a big loss against the Tascacitas. First time uh, Cedars beat them in the last three or four tries. Uh, you know, that's a big win. Uh, but I think that says a lot about the Tascacita that they're ready and poised to make a big run. Uh, you know, everything's pointing towards that big game against North Shore, but they still have to see C.E. King. Summer Creek's a big rival. Those are kids that stay in the same vicinity in the Humble area. So uh, I think they're setting themselves up for a great season. I know that those guys want to make a big run. Uh, you know, Blaylock, the running back over there, is, you know, a physical specimen, a great back. So, uh, you know, they got some pieces over there. Shout out to Tascacita and Coach Stump and my guy Zion Brown and those guys over there, Braylon Conley, getting a big win over Katie. We're going to take a small break, come back and talk about a few grind and shine players of the week, and then we'll talk a couple of games in week three here on the Third Coast Gridiron on the LSG Network. Looking to boost your company's marketing? Look no further than Fresh Media Works. Podcasting is the best way to promote your brand and increase your customer base. You can create your own show, be a guest on other podcasts, or advertise on existing podcasts to reach a valuable audience. Don't wait, start elevating your marketing game today with Fresh Media Works. Call now 713 269 4620 or find us online at freshmediaworks.com slash podcasting. Let's talk Grind and Shine Players of the Week. If this is your first time listening, Grind and Shine Players are the guys who got it done on the field. They got their grind on and they got their shine on. So we'll talk about a few players that led their teams to victory and had outstanding games because they got their grind on. And they shine on Friday night, Thursday night, or even Saturday night around the age. Let's talk about Bryson Broadway, junior quarterback, Magnolia West, 11-17 for 308 yards and six TDs. 28 yards of reception. Big-time performance, Bryson Broadway, a guy that you need to know about in the junior class in the age. Jordan Reeves, we talked about him earlier. He's playing quarterback for Lamar, but he can do it all. 17-22, 207 yards and three tubs as they got a big victory over the Woodlands. He also had 70 yards on the ground. Man, listen, the Lamar Texans rolled up almost 600 yards of offense, 575 total. Listen, they've, they've been shaping themselves up to make a big run. Uh, I think that they're going to be, you know, probably the class of HISD when it comes to 6A. Uh, they got a tough test against Heights, who's, a, you know, a rival with those guys coming up. My guy, Coach Dixon, and those guys over there. So, But Jordan Reeves is a guy that's being heavily recruited. Um, he's a great, great athlete. Had a chance to see a lot of Jordan in the 707 ranks as well. He can do it all. Shout out to my guy, Jordan Reeves, over at Lamar. Avery Robinson. Brookshire, Royal, man, six receptions for 119 yards and three touchdowns. And then he hopped on D, three pass break- breakups and four tackles and a win over Fur. Larry Benton the third from St. Thomas, eight receptions for 221 yards. And listen, five touchdowns on the night and a big win over Lumberton, 35-20. to 20. Cameron Matthews from Dolby High School, listen, the Longhorns got a big victory, 27-10 over Grand Oaks, which is a very, very good team. He finished with over 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Average, Listen, he's averaging 180 yards per game, two games to go in the season. Cameron Matthews, a junior over at Dolby High School, running back, running that peel, man. Congratulations, you are a grind and shine player of the week here in H. Time on the third coast gridiron. Vincent Jones, wide receiver, we talked about him at C. King. Nine receptions, 236 yards, and three touchdowns. Listen, C. King went on the road and won up in the DFW in Allen Stadium, which is a tough place to play. Listen, if you've never been to Allen Stadium, it's uh, one of the uh, best uh, fields that you ever see, stadiums that you ever see. It seats about 12,000 people. Uh, If you ever had a chance to go Around the stadium, their waiting room's underneath. They got a whole locker room underneath the stadium. It's pretty cool, man. But, you know, C.E. King didn't let that bother them. Quarterback Darius Clark, we talked about him, 368 yards and five TDs. But Jones had himself a monster game. Shout out to Vincent Jones, senior wide receiver over at C.E. King. Torian Roberts for A. Lee Taylor. 
12 or 19, 272 yards and four touchdowns and a big victory over West Side. Bryce Dorsey from Hitchcock. Now, Hitchcock's around the H, a little bit outside, but if you know how to get there, definitely check out Bryce Dorsey, man. He's a guy that can get it done and take it to the house in a minute, in a New York minute, man. Listen, he only carried the ball four times, but listen, he ran rough shot over their opponent in Edna for 152 yards and two touchdowns, 52 to seven win, man. Listen, Dorsey had a 96 yard run as well as they went up 24 to zero. Listen, he's a guy that you might need to know. A lot of these guys, Houston been flying under the radar, you know, when it comes to recruiting, uh, when it comes to being well known. But we like to spotlight guys that are really doing it big and have great nights and great performances here on the third coast gridiron because they got their grind and shine on. Let's finish this up, and we're going to talk about week three. Wyatt Francis legacy prep, seventeen to twenty six for three hundred five yards and five TDs and a big win over Tom Ball Rose Hill Christian. My guy Caleb Blocker over at Tompkins, twenty six. Carries for 216 yards and four touchdowns and also caught past a tough overtime loss to Bridgeland over there, man. Listen, this is a guy that gets it done, man. Caleb Blocker's a senior. He's been doing it for four years over there. Uh, he's he's a guy that you need to know uh, out of that backfield over at Tompkins. Uh, I think they got a big game this week coming up, and we'll talk about that here with our week three games to watch. But listen, Caleb Blocker's a guy that can do it. Four touchdowns in a, in a loss. Um, he's going to be a guy that's going to be prominent if Tom- Tompkins is going to be successful this year. And he's been doing it for a while. He can also return kicks. He's a, a guy that can catch the uh, ball out of the backfield, and, and he can line up in the slot and kill you with the uh, receiver game. So, you know, shout-out to my guy, Caleb Blocker, on the big, big victory. Oh, excuse me, the big rushing attempts, the big performance. You know, even though they had a loss to Bridgeland, Caleb Blocker got it done, man. Ty Ty Byers over at Lake Creek, 14 carries for 183 yards and five touchdowns, 56, 57 to six win over Elkins, man. Ty Ty Byers is a guy that you need to know. Lake Creek, kind of flying under the radar, but Ty Ty Byers is a guy that really, really runs that peel. You know what I'm saying? Great performance by Byers. And last but not least, we talked about Atascacita. They got a sophomore running back. They got a guy in Blaylock that runs and does an extraordinary job as well. Of course, they joined one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the area in Zion Brown in the backfield. But Mac, he was running like a Mac truck. 18 carries, 192 yards, and three touchdowns as they beat Katie 42 to 34 in a big, big victory, man. Shout out to all those grind and shine players of the week, man, in the H in week two. Listen, we're going to take a small break. We'll come back and wrap up the Third Coast Gridiron right here on the LSG Network and talk about week three. With open enrollment coming soon for Medicare, ACA, Obamacare, and small group plans for businesses with less than 100 employees, if you're in need of health insurance solutions, look no further than HAP Insurance Agency. Yes, HAP Insurance Agency is a fantastic resource right in the heart of College Station, Texas. Whether you're in retirement, a business owner, or simply looking for the best health coverage option, HAP Insurance Agency has got you covered. You can find them in College Station at 1551 Greens Prairie Road West, Suite 101A, or give Holly Pritchard a call at 972-897-0814. That's HAP Insurance Agency. Let's talk about week three a couple of games that you'll need to keep an eye on here in the H. This is the Third Coast Green Iron. I'm your host, Mark Henry. But before we do that, one other big game in Week 2 was High Tower versus Westfield, two very good teams, two teams that are going to be in, pl- in the playoffs. And High Tower takes the win. High Tower's a very good team. It was a very close game, 14-9, to nine, a very tense, uh, you know, defensive-type game. But, listen, High Tower's a very good team. Uh, they are 2-0, and and Westfield gets a tough loss. But, listen, Westfield will be around. You don't have to worry about these guys. They play hard. Uh, you know, uh, High Tower coach, you know, shout out to Kenise Anthony, man. Very good coach. Um, this is a big, big victory for those guys. A statement win here in the H. Um, but, listen, two of the best backs in the area, and Todd Atkins, uh, as well as uh, Zion Kearney, uh, who's also an Oklahoma commit, 
And one of the best backs in the area, and Jeremy Payne, a TCU commit, were all featured in this game. So there was a lot of star power, but at the end, at the end of the day, Hightower gets the big victory and comes out on top, man. Shout out to those guys for getting a big victory because, uh, you know, Westfield's a very good team. They're a team that usually is, uh, you know, hunting around the third or fourth round uh, when it comes to playoffs, and they get it done on a routinely regular basis every year. So both teams will be playoff teams. And I think that the at uh, Westfield will make a deep playoff run like they usually do. They'll get back on the winning ways over there uh, on the north side of the age. But, you know, shout out to Hightower for the big, big victory, man. So let's talk about a few games uh, coming up. College Park at Grand Oaks. This will be a Thursday game. Definitely a game, uh, you know, these guys are in the same vicinity, kind of Cron Row, the Woodlands area, big game on Thursday night. Definitely a game you should check out as well. You know what I mean? I think it's a game that – That'll feature some guys that'll, um, you know, be making some big plays. How about Klein Kane and Cypress Falls? That's a big game as well on Thursday. And Lamar at Clear Falls. We talked about Jordan Reeves and Lamar, man. These guys are playing at a high level. Definitely think that they're going to be a team that's going to make a deep playoff run when it comes time to hit those playoffs. Let's move over to Friday. We talked about Katie and Tompkins. We talked about... Caleb Blocker, who had a wonderful game in week two. He's going to be a catalyst to be a very, very important key cog offensively for Tompkins. If they can establish a run, uh, you know Katie's going to run that ball. That's what they do. Uh, it's a 19-6A matchup early on. Uh, we're talking about third game. You know, both teams should have got some cogwebs out. They're coming in at 1-1. One and one. Uh, This is for a 19-6A matchup. Uh, two teams that are you know, looking to make uh, some distance between the other teams in that particular 196A district. The Woodlands coming off a tough loss takes on Oak Ridge. You know how do they respond? Uh, you know the Woodlands is, is 0 and 2 for the first time in a while, um, but I think they'll be fine. They have some pieces over there. Uh, great coaching staff. Maybe Matar is one of the best players in the state. They're going to rebound, but a big matchup with Oak Ridge uh, coming in 7 p.m. Friday night. It's a 136A game. You have Willis and New Caney. This is a very, very good matchup. Uh, Willis is a strong team, but so is New Caney. New Caney's always, uh, you know, been a district uh, top two or three in 13-6A. But Willis is, listen, they got some pieces over there. DeBron Hampton is a guy that you need to know about over there. Uh, They play a very, very good brand of football, very physical up front as well. And, of course, you know they have my guy DJ Lagway, the Florida commit over there. Now let's run through another couple of games that you might want to check out. Let's go through a couple non-district games on Friday, North Shore and Westfield. We just talked about Westfield having a tough go with it against Hightower, and then they get the next opponent in North Shore coming in uh, to their home turf. Listen, this has been a series that's been uh, one-sided. Uh, it's probably going to be one-sided again. North Shore is very good defensively. Of course, Caleb Bailey has been playing at a phenomenal uh, level since he's come back uh, from his injury. Uh, DeAndre Blanc's playing well. You got DeAndre Hardeman Jr. This should be uh, a contest that North Shore controls early. But don't be surprised if Westfield hangs around for a little bit. Todd Atkins, listen, he's one of the better running backs in the state. How he does against his defense, that's to be seen. Uh, you know, it'll be 7 o'clock at Plant Forge Stadium. Summer Creek and Klein Collins. An intriguing matchup. Klein Collins is led by Tucker Parks, Western Tucky commit, one of the better quarterbacks in the area. Summer Creek led by Lloyd Avant. This is going to be a very good game, a game that you might want to see. If you can pull up, this is going to be a good game here. Uh, it'll be 7, p- 7 p.m. kickoff at Klein Memorial Stadium. Uh, a couple of more games here before we get out of here in Week 3. C King at Paraland should be an interesting contest as well. How about Bridgeland and Shadow Creek at Freedom Stadium? 7 p.m. That's going to be a really good game that you might need to check out. Jet Lewis has been playing at a phenomenal level. Quarterback over there. They got Mason Simmons, a great wide receiver, big body wide receiver who can go up and get it, and he can create space at the second level. He runs great routes. Bridgeland, big overtime win in week two. Shadow Creek. This is going to be a big, big game. How about Eisenhower and the Tombaugh Memorial? Um, That's a very, very good game as well. Aldine Davis, shout out to Coach Chatham and those guys over there. They played well. I think that Coach C is going to change the culture over there. They already have. 
Um, you know, Aldean Davis is a team that you might need to watch. It's gonna may not sneak up on some people here in a couple of a couple of weeks because they've been playing well. Uh, this is a team that you need to know about taking on West Side as well. Uh, a few more games that you might want to check out. Listen, Iowa Colony and Brookshire Royal. Brookshire Royal had a big victory last week. Iowa Colony's playing very well. Navasota, Belleville, that's a game that you need to watch as well, man. Uh, you know, Navasota's been a team that's been good in the past, following on hard times, but they could be rebounding as well. Look at a couple of private school Episcopal. Went up to uh, – Parish Episcopal in Dallas and got a big win. Uh, Madden Morgan's a, gla- a, run- a linebacker in the class of 2026 over there that's been playing a phenomenal brand of football. He's a leader on the defense. Uh, he's getting a lot of college interest, lots of power five interest. Big physical downhill linebacker that can run from sideline to sideline. Love his game. Keep an eye on that guy. Uh, one more, two more score uh, games here to talk about before we get out of here, man. Listen, super excited about this week three, lots of matchups that you'll need to check out. La Waller and Lake Creek, Lamarck and Hitchcock. Hitchcock had a big victory in week two. Can they contain Lamarck? That's what you need to know there. Uh, Lamarck, historically, they've been a great, great team. Hitchcock's on the team uh, that's kind of trending up. Uh, so they got a big victory last week. Can they continue that, man? Listen, we appreciate you guys listening in and tapping in to us here at the Third Coast Ground LSG Network. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Third Gridiron. You can also follow me on Twitter at MarkHen44 or on the Mark Sports, O N D A M A R C Sports. We'll be back to talk week three next week, Grind and Shine Players of the Week, and some big performances every week here on the LSG Network. This is the Third Coast Gridiron.